wish you all a happy new year. And everyone who has joined uh, the Small Business Micro Courses, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, I hope your endeavors in 2021 are successful. Um, and wishing you a happy new year full of happiness. Wishing you a year full of laughter, success, and peace. Yeah, happy new year. You know, it's been a, a very interesting year, but I think we've been able to provide a lot of great content to your audience, and I hope people have enjoyed. I know I've enjoyed working with you, and I've enjoyed, you know, creating these micro courses with you. I look forward to what we're going to do next. We have a lot of exciting topics that we can cover. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to touch on, you know, before this year, we check out for this year, is just go back and talk about briefly, you know, what it is that brought you to this point to create these micro courses. I know when I met you back in maybe September, you had a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of excitement about bringing education to your clients. Yeah, I, I, I think the vision was is, is to educate and support small business owners. Um, I know that during this pandemic, it has been a really hard year for everyone. Um, every, every small business is, is meeting, is, is very challenging this year to be in business. Um, especially as a small business owner um, and just being able to provide um, a piece of education that can help their business grow faster, grow their profits, especially during this challenging time of this COVID-19. I wanted to be able to put that out uh, and I wanted to be able to be free um, where, you know, we're supporting each other. I'm a small business owner as well. And I believe that, um, your financial education is a key to growing your business. And so um, a lot of our small business owners at this particular time can't afford coaching um, or, you know, it gets kind of expensive. But we, as, as presenting, putting these micro courses together, have given, given small business owners and entrepreneurs a way to be able to get the information and good content that they need to be able to increase their revenues and be successful. That's great. And I think you've really been able to do that. It's been a pleasure working with you over the last few months. I think we've released some great content. It's been fun. Um, you know, what we have planned for 2021, I think is exciting as well. You know, we started off this year and spent the last couple of months talking a lot about strategy and how to look at your business and, you know, take it from where it is now to maybe incrementally better than it was. And we, we looked through all the different steps of analyzing and looking at your strategy and it flows really well into, you know, the end of the year and the beginning of a net, all these things I came up with, you know, in terms of where my business should be, where it is now and where I'd like to go. Um, now we can start putting some financial back into that. And what we have planned for the next couple of months is just that we're going to provide some tools that will allow you to think through, you know, on paper and, and, and verbally and, in your mind as to what we need to do to position our business to accomplish our goals that we have, think through those goals in terms of the vision of our business, and then put some financial back into it with a, a financial worksheet that we're going to provide. And, uh, you know, this next year is going to be an exciting year because the world's going to open back up. We're going to have some new opportunities to take advantage of. And January is a wonderful time to, to rethink and think through what it is that you want to accomplish. So it's been an exciting couple of months and I, I know we have a lot more exciting things to come. So I'm going to provide just a few clips of some of the things that we've done over the last few months, just to, to refresh in your mind, or if you're new to these videos, it'll give you an idea of some of the things that we covered in terms of strategy. And uh, we had some good conversations about, you know, client experience and a couple other topics that I just want to highlight a few clips from 2020. And then as we move into 2021, you know, we'll have a, a new exciting set of things to cover. And that's what I like about the analysis that we just went through has a great, you know, has a great application. You know, you have the steps. The step one is packaging that product or service so that it appeals to the clients in terms of value. And then step two, pricing it so that your business is profitable and the clients 
again, see that value for the time, effort, and mon monetary trade-off that they're making to obtain it. And then the place and convenience, you know, making it so that they can purchase and consume your product with the path of least resistance because people don't put up with a lot of resistance when it comes to buying and, and using a product or service. And then our final week of promotion and communication is taking all of that and articulating it in such a way and in, in, in such a place and manner that will get individuals to come and buy your stuff, you know? That's why it's got such a fantastic application. And it is all about marketing. It's the P's and C's of marketing. So a lot of communication is about creating an experience, a positive experience. And if there happens to be any negativity that has happened, how do you, how, how do they communicate that well? Because we all know that communication does wonders when it comes to a problem. Yeah. And I love that word, create an experience for your client or customer. Uh, if, I mean, it's, it, communication seems so boring, but if you talk about an experience, it's like, what is, I mean, experience, you know, your customers are experiencing something. Yes, they're experiencing how they are going to do business with you or how they're communicating with you. What does that feel like to them? Um, so I kind of look at when, um, like event planners, you know, um, if you are a good event planner, you know that it's just not about putting um, tablecloths on a table um, or making sure uh, a candle is two piece, two candles is on a table, but you know that if you have to create an experience and an experience is in the details. So you want to know, you know, what the color, what, what the color schemes are for, for your client. And you, you know, you want to know how you want to make it feel, what kind of music do you want to play? You just don't want to throw it out there and just say, here, have at it. There's experience behind it. Um, and I call it is, I call it the details of it all. Uh, that makes everybody like, oh, this is nice, but they don't understand the details that go about beside it. They just see the big picture of things, but they don't see all the details that go along with it. That's the experience that your customer will get or when they walk through the door um, in, in those details that you, that you give to them um, before, they, before they purchase or buy from you. Exactly. That, that's a, that's a really, the event planner was a really good analogy because that's what it is. I mean, no matter what, whether you're trying to do it or not, you are creating an experience. And you can think of some experiences that are bad. Typically, people think of a dentist as a bad experience, right? <laughs> but, but I can tell you, I've been to one where um, they've really helped that, and, and they do a lot in their lobbies to create a better experience. And having a bunch of kids, I went to one where they had a little uh, play area, like a, a, an elaborate play area for kids. Made the experience so much better for the kids as they're waiting to go do their thing, their mind's not on it. Um, just an example of the experience that you get. Each business is a little bit different as to what kind of message they need to get out. You know, if I'm, if I'm Nike and I have a slogan that says, just do it, I need that to be recognized globally because I'm selling things globally and I'm selling a product that needs to be distinguishable immediately when people see it. So the solution that just do it is really, really important. 
if I'm a local business serving a local community, it's not as important to emphasize that. What's more important is to emphasize maybe the personal connection with the owner or the personal connection with the employees. Uh, you know, Nike doesn't do that. You don't have a lot of personal connection. I can't tell you who their CEO is, but I know that they have quality products. I don't need to know who's behind it. I just know that that swoosh, that name exemplifies quality. As a smaller local business, it's not that. So you have to, you have to know what message is to put your time and effort into as a business owner. And as a, a smaller business, it's not about creating a slogan that I put on a billboard. It doesn't need to be done. Maybe a face of a, a local individual, that might get you some bang for your buck, but not a big slogan that's gonna be, so that's a, um, you know, there's a lot of variables that come into adjusting your message for the business that you are in, but that's one of them. That, that I would like to add in that, cause that is so true uh, as a small business owner, you don't really have to spend a lot of money on slogans. The issue that I see with small businesses starting starting out uh, is consistent, um, being consistent in their branding, and then also um, making sure that the the person that you are trying to uh, portray to your client what you do in your services and product. Um, a lot of times when I have a conversation about what do you do, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about your business. And about the time they get finished explaining, I have no idea what they're doing, what type, what they're selling, what they're providing. I'm just confused until I ask about 20 questions. And I'm like, oh, I got it. You know, I finally got what you do, but it took 20 questions for me to, to get what you do. So being able to simplify that. So if your customers or clients want to do business with you, they immediately know what you do. The key is, like you said, packaging your message to the point where it, it encompasses the things you really, that are really important and gets across the story of your business. You, you sell best with conversation. That's how you, that's how you sell things. Now, if I'm selling um, Snickers candy bars, I can't have a conversation with everybody that comes and buys one. That's why they have to spend hundreds of million dollars to make their brand so easily recognized. And when I see a Snickers, I think of all the slogans and all the things, all the commercials that they've done. Um, um, they've done a good job of already telling their story. But as a smaller business, you have to be able to tell that face to face through an email, through a phone call. Um, and it has to be something that's well thought through. You can't just wait for someone to call and say, okay, well, here's what I do. And then go through the list of services. You lost them. You got to have your story already put together so that you can give a really good experience when they talk to you. That, that's so true. And, um, you know, so much has changed, you know, in, in, in business um, as we, as we progress, you know, progress through this COVID and stuff. And, you know, more of our clients are not able to personally see us or be able to communicate with us um, or be able to, you know, if you're selling product or clothing or, or, or they, they can't touch it, they can't feel it, they can't put it on their hands, they can't put it on their body. Um, and then that as a service industry, we're so used to going out um, um, in, you know, in our cities and in our communities and, and being able to physically, t you know, talk with individuals and, you know, you just get that, that relationship much quicker when you're when you're actually physically there in their presence so having to look at ways to to create your customer experience things have changed but you can still create that same ex same experience um, if you're selling a product um, a lot of times i've been seeing people on facebook instagram i've seen youtube channels where they are having people try on their clothing or use their makeup and they, and they do makeup sessions and, and they pr promote their product, um, hair products, makeup products. They're doing all kinds of different tutorials now just to give, that cus give their, their target customers a different experience 
that they may have gotten in their shop, but now they're getting across their computer, but they're still feeling it. They still can look at it like, oh, I'm, I'm liking that. And I still can be, um, can, can still be wanting to buy. from. It. So yeah, in, in these times, it's hard because you definitely have to find a way to create an experience in a different way. If you, if you can't touch it and, and, and use all your senses, you know, what senses can you appeal to? if it can't be in the present physical, because that's how we experience things through our senses. I can't stop smiling now. <laughs> oh. It's going to be an exciting 2021. The, the world's coming back to life. And, you know, our viewers are all going to have a great plan to take their business to the next level. Love it. Yeah, me too. <laughs>